I think we improved our O-line depth overall. Uh, we got kit five kids that were high school kids. We feel like they're going to be guys, gonna be future players. Uh, two JUCO O-linemen that we think can come and help us next year. We've got three D tackles, two DNs. We we're a pretty well-rounded group where we got them about every position, maybe with the exception of quarterback, punter, kicker. We didn't get any of those. Um, we signed one linebacker. That's all we wanted to do. And we got probably the kid that's the most athletic of all of them through the help of uh, ex-soccer coach Jeff Hansen. Uh, actually coaches uh, soccer at Carbondale, Illinois, where we got Tyrell from. Uh, very good skill group. Uh, three guys that are receivers, uh, three that are DBs. Probably two or three of those DBs could be receivers uh, and two very good running backs. So overall, we feel very good about the group. Uh, has a little bit of a local flair as, as we usually do. Uh, heavily involved in Kansas City and St. Louis as usual. Uh, got a couple of Iowa guys. Uh, got a good junior college receiver up in Iowa that we feel like can come in and contribute pretty quick. Um, got into Illinois. Joel Beer went across the river and went into O'Fallon, Illinois, which is just barely across in St. Louis. Um, you know, Kansas as usual, West Bell. Um, you know, got an Oklahoma guy, Aaron Bell, goes down there. So kind of some other states involved just outside of Missouri, but for the most part it's locally, regionally uh, focused. And we feel like it's going to be a pretty well-rounded, good group when it's all said and done. I got asked several times, you know, how do you feel about today? How, you know, you just never know until two or three years from now. And I think that our program has stood the test of time. That usually the class ends up pretty good and, and end up pretty good players. So questions? Questions? You've got quite a few guys, obviously, around the line of scrimmage, offensive and defensive line. And that's, you control the line of scrimmage and won the MIAA just two years ago. Is that something you go back to and look at and say, well, let's keep this up again? Bring in guys like this. Well, I think I think all college coaches are trying to do that anyway. You're always trying to make sure that you're uh, depthed up. That's not a word, but depth up. I like to say the word, uh, the word I've created. Um, but uh, both sides of the ball. You want more and more big bodies in there that run well. Um, I think probably, you know, I don't know about two years ago. I don't think we had great depth, even though it's a great old line. Uh, but I don't know if we've had the great old line depth we need to have here for the last two or three years, and that's been a constant. You know, paying our side, and hopefully we've achieved that with with the kids we've signed, um, with the two-year variety guy coming in, and, and the guy that we're hopefully going to redshirt and have him here for five years. A couple of those high school kids are really big kids that move well. Um, some are a little thinner that are very athletic. That we think are going to develop into something. Uh, D tackle wise, again, I don't think we have the incredible depth there. Over the last couple of years, we did at one point two or three years ago, and we just to me it's just reloading it and and, and trying to get more bodies in there. I'm guessing. Well, to me, if you're not, if you sign a junior college kid, they better be able to come in and start, or you know, come very, very close to doing it, or you shouldn't have signed them. And in all these guys' cases, uh, you know, Big Mike uh, Hotelling's how you say it, Hotelling um, it, it has played a lot of different positions. He's got a, a big frame that can play any spot. The, these guys aren't going to hand, be handed the job, but certainly they have a great shot to come in and and win a job, at least be you know in the top six or seven. Uh, Andres Perez um, is strong and, and very athletic and physical. So those two, I think, are going to come in and help. Uh, we feel good about Brandon Clark. Uh, we, as, uh, as I've said before, we do like a little mini combine on our visit. We do a pro agility, which is a 5'10", five, 5'5", five, five shuttle. Uh, we do a vertical and a broad jump. And I thought uh, Brandon's uh, sh shuttle run was outstanding. He actually got the three nines, which is high, high level. We've We've had very few guys get below 4-0 here. I mean, Michael Hill was a 3-8-9. I think at one point we've had a lot of kids get in the 3-9, you know, down through the years. But, I mean, maybe one a year that does it. So that's he's already ahead of the game with that kind of thing. He's a very smooth athlete, catches the ball well. So we feel strong that he's going to be a good player quickly. Talk about Derek Gray a little bit. You, you obviously had some luck with central running backs before. Uh, Hope it's the same luck, yep. <laughs> I mean, do you envision him as a guy that, that can contribute at that level at some point? I mean, maybe not to Harlan Hill finals, but, I mean, is he a guy you envision? Well, I mean, we've we've had some players lately that have played for us that you know they broke a mold, and I don't know if they'll we'll have anybody ever match them again. What they've done, it's like when Zerline left. I told somebody at a media lunch, I said, "Don't count on a kicker like that ever again." I'm going to be right. And we're going to have good kickers, but never like that again. Um, I don't know if we'll ever have Michael Hill again. 
uh, but I've I've watched Derek for a while. Um, you know, the, the, they come out to our, our camp um, that we have in the summertime, and I remember seeing him as a ninth grader how hard he ran. And I love I love he's a slasher. I love how he you know puts a foot in the dirt, and gets north south, and he's very physical. Uh, was impressed with his competitive juices this fall. Many a time I watched him. I watched how hard he competed out here in the Jamboree. Uh, one of the plays, if you're a Central fan, that I watched and really thought a lot of uh, late in the Ray Peck game, they lost to Ray Peck barely uh, late in that ball game. I think they were maybe inside a five or something through an interception or fumble or something, and the game's over. And Ray Peck kid is running the ball. 99, 100 yards, wherever he's going to go to go score to, for a nothing touchdown, nothing play. It'd been easy to quit. And, and uh, Derek runs the kid down and catches him on the inside of 10. And that showed me a lot about his character. And uh, uh, the people I talk to at Central speak highly of him. I love what a competitor he is. I love how hard he plays. And I love how physical he is. And that's going to give him a chance to play. Talk about the O-line a little bit. And any of the guys really stand out? Or all, they all kind of, of the high school kids? Yeah. Um, you know, there's a couple kids that we really like a lot. Um, there's some kids that are probably more developmental. Um, but, you know, there's one. The kid that's the biggest body is a kid named Tanner Hill out of Francis Howell. He's just a real big kid. Um, big, thick frame, 6'5", 300-pound kind of kid that uh, we feel like is going to be pretty good. Uh, Gary Starr is a kid out of center that was recruited by San Diego State, actually visited San Diego State. I uh, had a real early offer from Central Arkansas. Um, they they'll both kind of backed off. We got him. He's a 6'5", 250 kid. We got two kids in this class that were at one time, you know, kind of heavy kids as eighth graders, like kids that probably sat around eating a bunch of Cheetos and Starbursts and stuff and, and in front of the TV. They're probably like 5'11", 290, 300 pound kids. And now they're both 6'5", uh, 250 kind of kids. Now we're going to try to beef them back up. Gary Starr and Jordan Ragsdale out of Ruskin, who he thinks really raw and can play too. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's just so hard to tell. I hate ever just singling a kid out and saying, you know, um, they're going to be this, you know, because you just don't know. Sometimes it's amazing to me how many times the $500 guy ends up better than the $5,000 guy. Uh, we do feel like really strong about a couple of the, of the skilled kid class. Uh, there was a kid named da Daquan Irvin um, that uh, out of Branson, Missouri, that I felt very fortunate to get. Uh, he's a kid. I think it was just kind of hard to get down there. Not everybody got down to Branson's. You always think Branson's just right there. You're in Springfield. Let's just spin down to Branson real quick. That's a 45-mile spin uh, to get down there. But he had really late action. Uh, Murray State, Southeast Missouri, Missouri State were all offering him late. And he'd already committed to us and kind of stuck with it. So um, th there's some really good kids in this class that we feel, uh, you know, two years from now are going to be challenging. Yeah, I mean, we're still every year again. Like I think every year since we've had this beautiful thing, uh, we have beaten one double A's on at least one person, and it's it's happened every year. Where and and in most cases we've offered less money. It's been a high partial to a full, you know, versus a full ride. Um, you know, that's happened about every year. Uh, I've already mentioned the guy Daquan was the one that had the real late surge, and some of these other kids had flirtation of some kind. So that's who we're going after. Now, the problem is the areas we're recruiting right now, everybody's recruiting them. It's almost like, I mean, everybody in our league's there and everybody's studying each other's rosters and they're trying to go where everybody else goes. And, it, it, you know, you get done with the season and you're still playing against them through February, you know. And, and then now also Kansas City, St. Louis, uh, the Omaha area, they just get saturated with the Dakotas, the Illinois, Northern Iowa, and you're just, you're, you're going against everybody. And so, you know, again, thank you so much that we have this building because it helps us. How about the Illinois connection? You mentioned uh, Coach Hanson, but there's also another good Illinois, too. Do you have a connection now out there a little bit? Well, I think probably in those towns. Obviously, I didn't know Hanson was going to be such a good football recruiter when he was here as a soccer coach. But um, so, Chad, if you ever leave, I expect, you know. Um, but uh, Tyrell was a kid actually came to our, our one-day camp here uh, and tested off the charts, really just explosive athlete, great, great kid. Uh, it seems like he never has a bad day, and um, uh, West Bell did a great job staying with him and recruiting him, and we, you know we brought him in and got him. Uh, you know we every once in a while I think we've slid over into Illinois. I think Reggie's gone into Eastern Illinois, East Illinois or East, East St. Louis, excuse me, a couple times. Just hadn't quite worked out whether we quite like a guy or whatever. But uh, Joe went into Fallon for the first time, and and we think Taymon is a, is a very versatile athlete, especially you know when he's got the ball in his hands, he does some nice things. You mentioned some of the guys where you kind of have to maybe figure out where they're going to. Anything that you saw with him that maybe 
early indication of where you think he fits in, or is he going to have a chance to come in and compete? We're, we're going to try to go corner right now. Yeah. He Again, he probably, and I forgot about him, he's he's the most explosive athlete testing. He's a great leaper, tremendous basketball player at Hillcrest. Um, you know, I think he played. I think he played some slot and tailback, but we're going to try him at corner. But we're not ruling out, you know, that he could maybe play some offense. There, there's several of those kids are in that category. He's that kind of category. Um, certainly, all three DBs are that. Brandon Dandridge played receiver from Blue Springs South, and like I said, Daquan Irvin. There's a hundred things. And he, to me, Daquan Irvin looks just like Kobe, Kobe Bryant in the face. Some of our coaches don't see it, but as soon as I sat down, I said it's Kobe Bryant. So I maybe like him more. I think.